YouTube! Back at it again with the IRL TCG vlog series. Each week, we will be playing Master Duel in real life, ideally trying to play a new deck and mix things up, depending on what my friends are willing to let me borrow and misplay into the ground. Back in the olden days, we had to actually meet up in person and socialize with other human beings in order to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Anti-spell is in the standby phase, not the main phase. In this series, I'm going to be giving you my full breakdown, recap of the gameplay, and pack opening of my loot. Let's jump in to this week's segment. Well, everyone's been complaining about how the format is over a thousand dollars for a deck and all that kind of crazy stuff. Well, uh, listen, it turns out that you can actually go on eBay, uh, type in ready to play, and you can pick up basically any archetype for less than $20. Surely. So I did do a little experiment in the past playing a ready to play Salomon Great deck once upon a time. Uh, that went um, interestingly. I did manage to win two duels. I wonder how many we'll get this week. It is Labyrinth, which is a surprisingly better strategy. Let's see exactly what we got in here. I haven't actually opened this yet. I didn't bother reading the contents. I just saw that it was 40 cards. So um, hopefully it'll be a, a decent deck list. You know, I, how bad can it be? So for $20, we get a place at a backjack, honestly. Like, I don't hate this. It works out really well with the furnitures. Discarding, stacking your deck, and then getting a trap from the deck. Uh, actually, not too bad. So uh, I'm sure this will be uh, pretty re pretty relevant here. Uh, oh, they gave us one field spell. Labyrinth, Labyrinth. So far, so good. Uh, two Ku Clocks. Well, this card allows you to uh, activate your traps the turn they're set. And then we've got two Stovitoli and what appears to be two Chandelier. So these look like fairly standard ratios. I mean, maybe you play three and three. I don't know. Um, TCG ratios, Master Duel ratios. I, my brain's fried. Who knows? Uh, but this doesn't look too bad so far, honestly. Uh, for this amount of money we've spent, this is looking pretty good. Uh, surely we're going to get Lovely and Lady in here to really round out the deck. You know, even just one copy of each, I think, will be a huge uh, boost for our strategy. Oh, wait. No, we're getting two copies of Labyrinth Archfiend. Yeah, no, the battle, f the battle phase... A battle trick, uh, declaration of attack, labyrinth monster. Uh, so if you activate a trap card that is um, uh, usable when you uh, an attack is declared, I think, right? Actually, no. Uh, any trap card is activated, you can summon Labyrinth Archfiend. That's pretty good. Uh, the problem is that Labyrinth Archfiend doesn't set any good trap cards. He sets battle traps. Mirror Force, kind of based, but I don't know if that's going to cut it against Snake Eyes. Uh, but we'll see, though. Uh, so we got two copies of Labyrinth Archfiend. And um, would you believe it? That's, that's it for the Labyrinth card. <laughs> There's no other Labyrinth cards in here. There's, there's no other Labyrinth cards. Well, it's less than 20 bucks, so, uh, you know, I guess we deserve this. The rest of the cards they gave us is uh, two copies of the uh, Lilith, La Lady of Lament. Yep, so this is a normal trap searcher, which I guess is uh, going to be pretty good in this. And you know what? Lady Labyrinth searching traps from the deck is a bit expensive, okay? So we got to keep things on a budget here. And we also got this girl, the uh, other Lady Lament, or Lady of Malice, I think. Malice, Lady of Lament. Uh, I think this one, like, tributes to it to, like, reset one from the grave or something. Uh, so, assuming they give us Layer of Darkness here, I mean, that's crazy, right? That's, we just tribute our opponent's field for that. Uh, speaking of which, we got three copies of Arema, which is the uh, Layer of Darkness Searcher. Yes, um, there's, there's two field spells in this deck that have no synergy with one another that kind of completely contradict... Are you supposed to give your opponent a field spell? Like, I don't, I don't understand why, why this is. What I, I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, uh, so we got two field spells. Uh, this guy also draws a card if the layer is on the field. Uh, this thing is randomly here. Duke Shade, the Sinister Shadow Lord. I, I don't know what this is. Tribute any number of dark monsters and special this from your hand, and then it gains 500 for each monster tributed. Normal special target level five or higher dark, and you even add it to your hand. Okay, great. So we can recycle our uh, Labyrinth Archfiend. That's that's gonna come in clutch, honestly. That's very useful. Layer of Darkness. Uh, one single copy, one single field spell. I have a feeling this is probably going to be the MVP. I mean, tributing your opponent's monsters seems to be... Um, I'm going to assume the best way to play this deck, if we can just draw some of these cards, I suppose. Uh, one Labyrinth setup, which I think is like the one where it's like if you have a banished one and, a, and one in your graveyard or something, you can reset them. Banish in your grave, shuffle them into the deck if you control a fiend, set non-lab normal traps with different names. So like this card is like not even played in regular Labyrinth. Um, it's only good like mid game like deep into the grind and even then uh <laughs> i don't expect to go into a deep grind with this deck i don't know i could be wrong though we'll see so one labyrinth setup uh okay this is pretty good all right we got three copies of trap trick searching any trap in our deck here i wonder if they give us three of though that's the issue which uh okay we do we've got uh three copies of compulsory evacuation device which is you know not the greatest card right now putting flamberge back into the hand or a fire king garunix doesn't seem ideal so <laughs> not a lot of useful removal oh boy here we go uh, Loki, the best card in the deck here, other than Big Welcome and Welcome. 
Uh, when a monster declares an attack while I control a fiend, target a card, negate the attack, and then destroy another card. Uh, this is actually, like, a decent card. It's just a battle trap. That's unfortunately, like, the problem with it, obviously. Uh, but negating attack and popping a card is not too bad. So, um, yeah. Uh, so this is gonna shock and surprise you. But I think that might be it for all of the Labyrinth Trap cards. Yeah, I don't think there's a Welcome or a Big Welcome here. I don't know. Like, uh, are those cards expensive? I know Big Welcome is probably expensive. We couldn't get one Welcome. You couldn't throw one Ariana here. You couldn't toss us a bone here, Mr. eBay seller. God damn it. All right, okay, we got uh, Dimensional Barrier. That, I mean, this could, this could just win us games. All right, so let's hope we play against um, Lab, uh, Branded, and then we could just keep resetting it with uh, Lovely. We they didn't give us Lovely. Back to the front. EEV. Maybe this will win us games, but I don't even think this card is that good right now. Weird. Redeemable Jar. <laughs> uh, banish a trap, and then add from your grave to your hand a trap with a different name. It's not awful, I guess. I don't know. Uh, bottomless. Yeah, Bottomless, they, they destroy and banish a Garunix. That's going to be huge. Uh, this is maybe the best card in the deck here. Ga Ghastly Glitch. Uh, pop and send a fiend. So you pop a card when you control a fiend, then you can send back Jack and then get more traps. The card's actually low-key crazy. The problem is they gave us one copy, so we can't even trap trick for it. So the only way to get this is to randomly hit it on the 33% chance of Lilith. Not very consistent, is it? But hey, we got one glitch. Pinpoint Guard! <laughs> Wait, what does this do? In your graveyard. Oh, we can bring back Backjack. But Backjack, like, banishes itself. I don't even know who we're bringing back with this. That's good, anyway. Oh, boy. I can't wait to bring back Lilith. Uh, all right. And, oh, Metaverse. Okay. Actually good card. We can put Layer up immediately. Because I don't think Labyrinth Labyrinth is going to be very useful. So, one Metaverse and uh, one Mellow Villain Catastrophe. Okay, that's 40 cards here. Like, I'm not even trolling, but, like, this deck list with, like, honestly, if they give you, like, one lady... Ariana, Welcome, and Big... Just one of each of those copies by itself, I think, like, actually gives this power triple the scaling or something. But, uh, yeah, that's 40 cards here. So, um, you know, not, a, not ideal, but it's something, I guess. Uh, we have an extra deck, by the way. We Witch. Is that a fucking... <laughs> what am I gonna do with Decode Talker? Okay, this one I understand. Dark, generic Link 2. <laughs> what did they give me a Decode Talker for? <laughs> Underclock Taker. I'm gonna be doing some crazy OTKs with Labyrinth Archfiend, aren't I? Uh, what? It's just a Cybers deck. What's going on? What do they think the win condition of Labyrinth is, huh? Is it a link climbing deck? And Pit... No oh, wow. Just... Okay. No Muckraker, huh? Is that card expensive? Is it? Is it... Maybe it's out of the budget, right? Muckraker is probably expensive. Anyway. Okay, that's the deck list. Uh, this looks absolutely cursed. Like I said, if this had, like, maybe, like, one welcome... Uh, just to really, uh, synergize and do, uh, stuff with the furniture. Like, literally just one of those, I think, would be so, uh, good, actually. And it can't be that expensive. But anyway, ready to play. <laughs> ready to play. Sure, let's see if we can win a game. It's a brand new day and a brand new Locals vlog, baby. We're at Paisley once again, and I'd just like to take this time to thank all of the Patreons who've been contributing for this series. Guys, this series is, um, it doesn't do well in the uh, grand scheme of the algorithm. It's more of a passion project, and it's always a minus financially for this. So if you do want to keep seeing these vlog series, Patreon is a good way to contribute. Or on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash farfa. Side note as well, when I read the comment section of these vlogs, it's just a wall of text of timestamps saying, this was illegal. You couldn't do this. This activation could What am I supposed to do with that information? What do you I just hop into my time machine and I guess I'll fix the play and then come back here and then we'll... Well, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a confusing game. So, I don't know. I guess we'll just embrace it. Um, comment down below with your favorite misplay. Now that should drive up the algorithm. Like and subscribe. So, our opening hand for this one is a redeemable jar, a fair welcome, and not a lot of happiness, honestly. We went the dice roll, however, so that's kind of cool. Set three cards and no furniture, I guess, makes it kind of sad, but it's fine. Uh, our opponent's going to go Imseti Discard Destrido, which must be nice. He activates Shirin in the hand, and, um, yep, here comes the gravy train. Searching, drawing, summoning, eventually leading up into a zombie vampire. A zombie vampire is an ignition, not a trigger, so this is going to be perfect for our bottomless trap hole, our 2004 staple. Now, weirdly enough, it was actually somehow all he had. He just swings and passes, and this is kind of a silly misplay because uh, I can't use the welcome labyrinth, sorry, the, the fair welcome labyrinth, because you need to control a fiend in order to activate it. It's not just a generic, you know, mirror force, basically. Uh, whoops. Uh, we'll learn for next time. Uh, so you need to control a fiend in order to use fair welcome labyrinth. I would have been able to pop the uh, king sarcophagus here uh, and get a free trap, so. <laughs> Reading! Counter number one. I draw for turn, normal summon a fiend, it's malice, and then I guess I just pass my turn. Epic. He goes straight to the battle phase and attacks, where I can now use my fair welcome, and I use it to target his king sarcophagus, and then chain labyrinth barrage, a weird card that copies card effects, and copying card effect rules are bizarre, and I don't know how 
if anything I did actually is legal or works, but I think I get to pop two and set two from deck here. Loki kind of broken. So I get Glitch and Dimensional Barrier. He changed Super Polymerization and then fuses away the Shire into Kaleido Heart hitting my back row. My Redeemable Jar is chained, but to what end? To what end, Duelist? I'm dead, I can't use my new set cards, I get OTK'd. Okay. Interesting trial duel. It didn't go as bad as I thought it would, but still pretty, uh, pretty bad. Let's uh, see how game two goes, where we open a hand of furnitures, a field spell. I mean, you know, this is kind of looking like a nice labyrinth hand if we actually had, you know, targets like big welcome and stuff. Like, what am I going to do with Kook Lock and a fair welcome, all things considered? <laughs> I Chandra Glare set fair welcome, Stovey set barrage, and then I add back the Kook Clock using the field spell, and then I pass my turn. I forgot to control a fiend again. I'm sorry, okay? After a flurry of plays, literally none of this mattered. My cards don't do anything until he goes into the battle phase, and he proceeds to summon Baron, popping cards, Kaleido spinning things, which he was about to do with the Beatrice, and I get OTK'd. But here's the thing. These cards are actually not that bad, quality-wise. I mean, you can generate so much advantage if you go to the battle phase. The problem is that... The battle phase is like a 2011, like, sort of, uh, mechanic. Uh, it's not really that important these days, is it? Uh, hopefully we'll draw more compulses, I guess? Well, anyway, whining aside, let's go to round number two. Round two, we win the dice roll again, and ha, goddamn, I imagine I was playing a good Labyrinth deck, huh? Our hand is way better. We got Bagjack, Stovey, Malice, Barrage, and Glitch. Glitch plus Barrage is bonkers, at least I, I think that's how it works. Stovey gets a fair welcome with Backjack, and then we stack our deck, setting two, normal summoning Malice, and then passing turn. He starts with Activate Linkage to send his set card, and I chain Glitch to target the set card, which the ruling here is that it won't resolve if the card is set by Linkage, uh, is sent to the grave. Uh, so he can chain Forbidden Droplet to send the set card, and because Linkage doesn't target, he can just set the Droplet on the resolution. So I chain Backjack here, and I get a Malevolent Catastrophe that was on top of my deck. He proceeds to the battle phase with Hayate. I use my fair welcome to pop and what it actually resolves. I destroy the Hayate and I set a compulsory evacuation device from deck. My Stovey comes back and my brother in Christmas has three spells in graveyard, which means Drop it. Engage! I am ill, I am not feeling well, it is literally Jover. Now my opponent decides to grab Ray. This is where you play the Josh clip. It's, uh... Oh my god, yes, I love Ray. I would die for Sky Striker A's Ray. Kagari, get engaged. Two bonus cards are drawn. He pops Stovey. Afterburner with the bonus effect hits my barrage. He sets three card and goes for Shizuku to get a Widow Anchor and pass turn. Now, what's my clap back to this destruction of my entire field here? Yeah, that's right. I normal summon Duke Shade. I, I think I can't even remember his name. Why do I keep drawing this crappy little one-off? I don't know, but I get to use Malice now, which tributes two cards to set back Glitch from the graveyard as a tribute for cost, and then he activates, all by the grave. I like tributing two of your monsters like it's just actual just negative seven play dude it's it's technically statistically minus one but it feels like seven he draws he cyclones my compulse which i use on the shizuku triggering ray and from here it's a slow bleed with zero cards and top decking against the engage dot deck hang on a second ebay labyrinth does not have the same kind of grind game that sky striker has how game number two we have trap trick back to the front barrage glitch uh, Barrage Glitch is just an FTK, man, but the problem is that if they ever chain anything to your first trap, the card is dead, which most likely, um, the reason why no one plays it. We summon back Jack, so we actually control a Fiend this time. See, I did it correctly. See, I control a Fiend now. Set four and pass turn. Woo! He activates multi-roll, and I chain the Glitch here, sending Labyrinth Archfiend from my deck to the graveyard. I don't want to be able to not respond to his spell card, so I think this is correct here. Now, the idea here is that I can, uh, start, step, battle, uh, fair welcome from the deck, and... Something like that, I guess. I don't know. Labyrinth, Labyrinth Archfiend circulation seems good. He activates Engage, searching Ray. Oh my god, I love Ray. I would normal summon this Sky Striker Ace Ray. This back to the front is going to change my life. Except he has Ghost Bell to negate the uh, to negate my call of the Haunted and Archfiend. Bro, you're hand-trapping eBay decks, man. Give me a chance. Let me just win one game today. He enters the battle phase and attacks with Ray, where I fair welcome target to pop and set while he chains Droplet on the target. And because I have no target left for the fair welcome on resolution, I don't think I can pop anything. At least I think I know Labyrinth rulings. Kagari adds back Engage. He gets Afterburner, goes into Shizuku, adds a Widow Anchor and passes. We draw Labyrinth, Labyrinth. I crash my backjack to stack the deck. Off the top, we get a D Barry, which is amazing against uh, these blue ritual monsters he keeps summoning, huh? They're... Gosh, you know, there's this ritual monsters. I never heard that joke before, huh? I hate this deck. He draws Kagari for Engage, and I've been engaged so many times this duel, I feel like an Arabian prince with my seven wives. And from here, he has like five cards in hand, 
three set cards I'm bleeding out. Eventually, I do get to a Labyrinth Archfiend on field by flipping the barrier, triggering the field spell, which revives. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that the Labyrinth field spell has another effect. I try and attack over Shizuku since my Labyrinth Archfiend gains like, I think, 400 attack for each different trap in my graveyard. So he's, he's pretty damn massive, even with all of the spells in his graveyard for his Shizuku, except on Declaration of Attack. He activates the Infinite Impermanence. My guy gets really small. And why are you hitting yourself, Farfa? Why are you hitting yourself? All right, let's go to round three. So this is the big one, the duel you're waiting for, and probably the reason you clicked on this video. Yep, it's Snake Eye Fire King. Now, the thing is, it's the 0-2 bracket, so please be nice. I'm an absolute demonic entity at dice rolls today, by the way. Chandra, Kuklok, Malcat, Compulse, bottomless. This beats every Snake Eye hand in existence. No cap. I mean, there's literally proof. Keep watching. I set two cards and pass turn. Apps bust, broken turn one play. You normal summon Snake Eye Ash into Poplar, makes Karibo, sends with the Ash to summon Flambirch, who I use bottomless trap hole on, and oh man, I just hit the blue eyes. Never mind, he chains Fire King Kirin to destroy and special and trigger the Flambirch for a revive too. How did bottomless trap hole make me go minus three? He summons Apaloza for four materials and goes Witch to summon Discard Imperm, sends with Sinful to summon out Ponix, getting Sanctuary for Island, to summon out Garunix from the hand that he just searched, destroying the Arvata from the deck, who brings back Kirin. Now, when the start step of the battle phase here, uh, a lot's happening, I know. I compulse away the Apaloza, and then I use Ku Clock to use Traps this turn. I activate Shandriglir to set Farewell Cup, which triggers the Clue Clock to summon itself to the field, which I now control a Fiend for. See, I'm remembering. And I can use my set Farewell Cup. Well, he chooses not to attack. Yes, destroy one card too good. And then pass his turn. Now, in the end phase here, his Kirin should die because of the Arvata, but you know. <laughs> Reading! Counter number two. On my turn, I declare an attack with Ku Clock and then activate Barrage to negate the attack and destroy Sanctuary, triggering my Archfiend in the hand to summon itself and another fair welcome from the deck. I don't know, maybe I should've just got a Compulse or a Glitch with the first fair welcome here, although popping Fire King cards just doesn't sound great, I guess, I don't know. His Grunix, by the way, here is absolutely massive. Attacking Kirin, which shouldn't be on the field here. That's kind of probably got a bad play, we don't wanna pop Kirin, uh, so we just pass turn. The Island pops to add the Kirin, and then normal summons Snake Eye Ash for Poplar to summon, and then brings out Karibo, scaling the Poplar. He goes to the battle phase, and I can use my fair welcome to pop the Fire King Island, blowing up his entire field. He gets to summon back Kirin, and then Kirin pops Kirin to summon back, and he passes turn. He didn't destroy a card. Yeah, I don't know. He could be new to the deck, I suppose, but that was definitely not the optimal line here. There's plenty of Link plays, Flamberge lines that should have happened, but it is what it is. We take those. I'm struggling against the Kirin right now, though, so I just normal summon Lilith, tributing Ku Clock to randomly set a trap for my deck, and he has Effect Veiler, so a uh, nice minus one. Pass. He summons Ash, gets Oak, tries to swing into the Lilith, but you actually can't do that since she's protected from Archfiend on field effect, which means only he can be attacked. So he just has to pass turn. And I descend to end phase Glitch. I get back Jack, I get back Chandraglir, and I set a free barrage, and then I draw for turn. Chandraglir gets the Labyrinth field spell. Backjack stacks my deck, and now I pass turn again. Now, to be fair, I might as well force out the Kirin at this point. I mean, yeah, I'll lose a card, but what else can I do? Just never attack? In hindsight, I could maybe set up a Compulse instead and try and keep it in hand, but Kirin is just so easy to summon itself. I don't know how this deck is supposed to deal with him, honestly. <laughs> he draws for turn and gets Black Witch with Wanted, summoning it over Ponix for Sinful. He links off for Dark the Dark Charmer. Well, my dreams have come true. Kirin has been outed by Dark the Dark Charmer. He summons my Ku Clock and gets Little Knight to banish Archfiend, but I dodge the effect by using the Eradicator calling spells. On the new chain, I should have summoned the back of the Archfiend from the graveyard, I guess. I wasn't playing perfectly either. Um, the field spell, I think, should be able to bring back my Archfiend here. He summons Oak for Ponix, circles into Flamberge, links up into Princess, and now here I use my Lilith to go for Compulses and Trap Tricks. I activate back to the front for Archfiend and then chain the Labyrinth Barrage. Now, realistically, this was correct. Barrage and copy card effects are so dumb and ruled weirdly. So I somehow managed to gaslight myself into thinking that I couldn't copy it because I didn't have the right activation requirement or something because how can you summon a target at resolution if the activation requirement was the one that targeted that monster? Do I just summon the same guy twice? Well, apparently you can just summon two monsters here. I get my Archfiend and Lilith back and set a pinpoint guard. My last remaining attack declaration trap card from Labyrinth Archfiend. Yeah, pinpoint guard. It's not quite jelly cannon, is it? Shut the hell up. He summons Sunlight Wolf, brings back two little guys, recycles Kirin to hand. <laughs> not Kirin. He links Masquerade and then passes turn. I activate Compulse in the draw phase, bouncing away his IP, and then I set a random trap off of Lilith, bringing myself back in the next chain, since I change it to the Compulse. I normal summon Chandraglir and I put Archfiend into attack. I clear the field with Garunix coming back, and now I get to the real card in the deck, a Layer of Darkness. On his turn, he can't out Archfiend. I tribute his Garunix with Lilith, 
for cost and after a 35 minute duel somehow some way ebay labyrinth manages to take a game off of snake eye fire king let's go now surely it's not gonna happen twice right well, he goes first and doesn't start with a great hand. Yaksha set two, baby. We draw for turn and we normal summon Duke and set five. And this is what we call a Labyrinth deck. He passes turn to me and I guess I just go Metaverse and I add Layer of Darkness. I activate Layer, normal Arima, and I tribute his Arvata for cost to draw, which he uses an Impermon, which feels a bit minus, but ayo, it deals with the floaters. We Trap Trick for Welcome and then we pass turn here. He gets a token off of Lair, which is wrong. It should have been on my side of the field because the Arvata was tributed on my turn. So I guess I just gave him free Link Fodder for no reason. Whoops. <laughs> Reading. Counter number three. He normal summons Ash Blossom. Kirin pops it to summon, wherein I bottom list it, but he changed Circle of the Fire Kings. He just doesn't use Kirin here, by the way, which single-handedly wins him the game uh, because it should just pop my Lair here and I can't... I, 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 I lose. But hey, I ain't complaining. He passed his turn because I guess he doesn't want to trigger my Fair Welcome, so on our turn, we just tribute his Arvata with Arama to draw. We normal Lilith. Fair Welcome pops the token. Uh, set a glitch from the deck, and we have five sets again. We can just pass turn here. On his turn, he Sanctuaries for Fire King Island, popping the Ash for Garunix, summoning Arvata with Kirin that was destroyed. And I make sure to chain before the Kirin pop comes out because using Eradicator Epidemic Virus here is Epidemic Virus. Tributing is Garunix, by the way, because of Lair and declaring spells. At this point, he essentially just gives up because the field spell would destroy all his monsters. And he would not be able to use Kirin again. And we take an insane big fat 2 ow against Snake Eye Fire Kings couple of illegal interactions that didn't really matter too much in the end and I think I did the major misplay with the barrage one turn but I think that's because I just don't know how the ruling works exactly but overall I'm happy with my performance here I think I did really good all things considered and hey we took a game off of snake eye you know like got, gotta be happy about that well here's the opposite end of the spectrum it's snake eye fire gang again for round number four Lilith plus Lair might actually be an FTK though, right? He bonfires for Poplar, and this all goes into a bunch of Fire King stuff here, and eventually he co-links Nightmare Phoenix to pop my set, Fair Welcome. Now, I could tribute with Lilith, but he would still get the draw anyway, plus I have more important worries in life right now. You know, just philosophically, you know, just as a, um, as a passing, fleeting thought, you know, there's more important, uh, horrible things happening in the world right now. Like summoning Kirin. So that's why I decide to save the tribute. He summons Princess, and I guess I immediately tribute that. I just contradict what I said six seconds ago. It's fine. Princess is a good card as well. He normal summons Oak to bring back Poplar, sends for Flamberge, and then makes IP, which triggers Flamberge for two more bodies, who summons Princess. Uh, number two, that brings back the Flamberge, scaling the Mascarena. He tries to link summon into the Salomon Great, uh, Great Phoenix, uh, but he actually can't because Lair of Darkness. <laughs> Kind of epic, huh? It's a floodgate, right? <laughs> Reading! Count to number four. Surely this is going to be enough to save us, though, right? Well, no. He makes Amblo Whale and clears out Lilith for some damage and then gets a token in the end phase off of Lair. See, we resolved it correctly this time, right? We're reading properly now. We draw a normal summon Arama. He summons Mask and then tries to link, but I go Compulsory Evacuation Device on the Amblo Whale. I'm not sure why I did this. Watching this back, it's a bit confusing. I feel like there was definitely a reason, but... You know, watching back, Mask just seemed like the obvious choice here because I can bounce it away when he activates the effect and it means he doesn't make SP and I would still probably get to trigger something else um, with the Arama. I want to say it's because I forgot that she needs to use herself as a material and I thought maybe he could use other cards. I'm not going to justify it. Uh, brain, ouchie, hurty, owie, poopy. Ah, I'm <laughs> misplaying. SP banishes the lair and from here we are going to get hard out advantage despite being able to attack over the SP. Chanjaglir gets a fair welcome and he claps back with a whole bunch of Charmer. Fire King plays, Kirin pops, and with only a battle trap, there's really nothing we can do from here. And so we lose round number four, game one. Let's go to game number two. Game two, we open Arama, Labyrinth, Labyrinth, Compulse, Malice, and it's, I mean, it's not too bad, I suppose. Uh, hell, this lair is probably the only saving grace, all things considered. We set two cards and pass turn. He normal summons Oak and crashes Oak to trigger Garunix in hand, destroying Ponix. He attacks into Malice, but we compulse the Grunix back to the hand where he's forced to set one card and pass back to us. Not a great opening, I suppose. Fire King Snake Eye is worse than pure Snake Eye. Do not at me. 
We draw for turn and swing with Malice to set and pass here. He summons Ponyx in the standby phase, grabbing Sanctuary for Island. He pops the Ponyx for Arvata, triggering the Garunix popping Kirin, so we don't have a choice but to use the Malice now. We tribute two monsters as a quick effect, our set Kuklok and his Garunix to get back the Compulse from the graveyard. The Kirin brings back the Garunix and he destroys our set Malevolent Catastrophe. He normal summons Arvata, Talents takes our Malice, and then starts doing some Link stuff. He swings, passes turn, gets a token, and we're really just not in a good spot, huh? Nope. My only choice here is to sacrifice the best card of my deck for Labyrinth Labyrinth and hope that this trap card summoning back a Fiend can actually get me somewhere and I can use it to trigger the field to pop and summon Archfiend in my hand or something. None of this really matters though because my only way to remove things is by destroying, which will just keep triggering all of his cards and Lair of Darkness is my only win condition, but without anything to actually use the Lair to tribute cards, it's just kind of doomed. And that is the end of my tournament run, ending on a 1-3 and three record. How very sad and unfortunate. Overall, this deck is complete garbage. Now, I don't want to say these eBay things are scams per se, but they are technically ready to play. You, you can play them. I entered the whole tournament and I ran with this, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know if I could really describe them as like starter decks with like a core per se. I guess just for fun with friends, just a pile of cards is enough to, you know, muck around with and enjoy. Now before I get into my outro here, let's open the loot today and see what we've pulled as part of our spoils. One pack and one OTS. Yay! I have been holding on to these two packs for like two weeks now before opening these because I do film these a little bit in advance. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, two packs, yes, one singular Phantom Nightmare and one OTS. It's amazing prize support for going one and three, I suppose. Uh, only have myself to blame here. All right, we've got a Mementolin here. A uh, Vagno... Yep, words. Jongler. Ghoul Elu... Jongler. <laughs> Magmacho Dragon and a Yamarashi. Okay, that's our holo. Uh, is there a world in where I pull an ulti? Ain't no way, right? Ain't no way. All right, here we go. We've got, oh nice, it's Marionette Might. Um, this is the side deck against Unchained, which is still relevant and good in the format, surely, right? Marionette Might, we've got a Four Strix. Wow, this is a common reprint, really? I just wasted money. Okay, anyway, I'm probably gonna do Raid Raptors as part of the vlog at some point, by the way. Uh, so yeah, okay, cool, we pulled the Raid Raptor Four Strix, and finally, our holo from the OTS is... I, that was terrible. Is... Yeep. All right, full holo pearly. If anyone wants to buy my Pearly Core, please let me know. I, I, it, it hasn't been reprinted in Rarity Collection. That hasn't been confirmed. Uh, do not, do not go on the official Konami website and look for announcements. Well, another week, another episode. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this iteration of the vlog series. And if you really want to be able to help this series out, please consider subbing on Patreon or my personal Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash farfa, which you should also follow uh, as I stream Monday and Wednesday to Saturday every single week. If you have any feedback or if you have any uh, specific suggestions or decks you want to see being played or ideas for mixing up the kind of format and the card pool, not necessarily, hey, play current format, but, you know, anything else that I could potentially do at Locals with experiments, uh, let me know. Uh, for example, I have an idea where I'm going to try and play nothing but staple cards, literally just 40 hand traps. I'm going to see how that goes, you know. Thank you everyone for watching and until next time, adios!